Hey everyone, my name is Jack. I'm a 23-year-old real estate investor and soon-to-be attorney, and on this channel I cover a variety of topics as they relate to real estate, investing, the markets, and pretty much everything as it has to do with personal finance. So if you like that sort of content, be sure to have a look around the channel, and if you like what you see, be sure to subscribe. But today I want to talk about investment principles, and more specifically the investment principles that drive Sam Zell's career and have driven it over the decades. Sam Zell is a famous real estate investor and entrepreneur, and for those of you who follow the channel, you'll know that I recently invested in one of his REITs, Equity Commonwealth, and I did a whole breakdown on that recently. It was in my M1 Finance series, if you're at all interested in checking that one out. But I wanted to go over the investment philosophies and principles that have driven Sam Zell's investment career, especially over the last 50 years, since he has proven to be one of the more prolific investors of our time. He's most certainly an interesting character, and a lot of the references that I'll be referring to in this video come from his autobiography, this book right here, Am I Being Too Subtle? It's based on his catchphrase, Am I Being Too Subtle? which he uses when he's trying to explain things very bluntly because he is a rather blunt person and he wants to make sure he's being very very clear whenever he is trying to articulate an idea he does not like to sugarcoat things i definitely highly recommend this book by the way so if you're at all interested in picking up a copy for yourself i'll include an affiliate link in the description below but without further ado let's get into it the first principle it's going to sound a little weird but it's the idea of being a grave dancer one of sam zell's nicknames that he sort of gave to himself but the industry later adopted it for him is that he is a grave dancer, meaning that he kind of dances around a particular property or company's grave and then issues some sort of new life into it after it supposedly dies and now he gets to take a chance at running the show. It's definitely a weird name, but the principle does make a lot of sense. And Sam Zell definitely has no apologies for this nickname. In fact, he says, some might see buying and creating value from others' mistakes as a form of exploitation, but I see it as giving neglected or devalued assets in any industry new life. So again, he's trying to provide new value to an asset or an industry or whatever the actual venture is. He's trying to add new value or solve some sort of problem that caused that initial demise, if we can call it that. He prides himself on being able to resurrect these fallen projects and turn them into very lucrative ones. And he has definitely applied this principle in practice, especially in the real estate industry. However, he doesn't solely invest in real estate, but I'm going to focus on that here. He prefers to invest in properties below their replacement cost, meaning he would prefer to buy and redevelop a property or somehow reposition it as the opposed to developing from the ground up, not that he won't steer clear of development. But when he invests in real estate and when he tries to build these real estate ventures, he pays very close attention to supply and demand. Over his decades of investing, he often sells when supply starts to get a little too hot. That is, there's too much supply entering a particular sector of real estate, and he'll often sell off well before a crash, usually, and will try to stay liquid, since that is a very big part of being a grave dancer. You need to be liquid and have money set aside or be able to draw on money to then be able to take advantage of these opportunities when something is distressed or needs help. Back to Equity Commonwealth, which I mentioned earlier, that's a company that Sam Zell acquired in 2014. He became the chairman then. And in 2014, until now, they've sold off nearly 100 or 125 or so properties, if I have the number right, of this portfolio in Equity Commonwealth and only have four properties remaining. So they have this huge cash pile since Sam Zell wanted to put the company in a much better, more liquid position and get rid of underperforming or perhaps overpriced assets and pay off a bunch of debt. So now he is really well positioned to take advantage of new opportunities because his company has such a strong balance sheet now. And this is a theme that he has kept up throughout his career. It's not new to the 2010s. He did it all the way back in the 1970s, for example. While everyone was building a bunch of properties in the early 70s, he decided to tap the brakes and start building up a cash pile. Even though the market was very hot and he could have made a lot of money in the short term, he decided he'd rather be well positioned to try and take advantage the opportunities that would come in an eventual crash, since he saw supply is getting a little bit too loose. There was too much inventory, especially in the multifamily space at the time. Then from 1974 to 1977, he started buying pretty much everything in sight at a steep discount because he had the cash, he had the liquidity to take advantage of those opportunities and reposition them and make them very valuable again. And he's not afraid to accept offers when demand is high. So it's not just a supply side equation. He looks at both supply and demand when he makes his decisions. One of the most famous examples of this was 
in 2007 when he sold off the large REIT that he had built, Equity Office. It focused, obviously, on office buildings. He sold it to Blackstone. And just a year later or a couple of years later, the buildings that he sold to Blackstone were trading at about 65 cents on the dollar. I shouldn't say trading, but they were worth about 65% of what they were when Sam Zell had owned them and sold them to Blackstone. He was okay with selling it to Blackstone at the time, even though the market was doing really well, because he said he got a, quote, godfather offer. So he took the offer and took the profits while he had the chance to do it. He was not too greedy to take profits. He saw that clearly this was a very good offer and he should take it and then be well positioned to take advantage of other opportunities after that. And this leads to the last sort of point with grave dancing, and that's that you have to be ready to pull the trigger when the opportunity is there. Or as Sam Zell puts it, grave dancing involves confidence, optimism, conviction, and no small amount of courage. All the opportunity in the world means nothing if you don't actually pull the trigger. Now, the second major principle that Sam Zell tries to run his investing career by is to shut out the noise. He wants to make sure that any venture he's getting into, he is doing it because it makes sense to him. And that means he's going to listen to other people's opinions, too, to try and see what they see, since getting many perspectives is ultimately important. And he ideally is trying to be someone who sees not only the problems with a particular thing, but the solutions as well, since those solutions are the opportunities he's looking for. But that's ultimately risk. So when he takes those risks, he says that once he has formed his opinion, I have to trust my perspective enough to act on it. That means putting my own money behind it. So my level of commitment is usually high. So this is why he has to be able to shut out the noise because he needs to make sure he has such a high commitment when he makes a particular investment that he's not going to listen to short-term criticisms, and he's only going to take things that are really serious to the underlying investment because he needs to do his due diligence beforehand. That's a big part of any investing, especially in real estate. Due diligence at the beginning, making sure you're getting it right on the buy side, essentially, is very important. Not that you shouldn't pay attention to what goes on after that, of course. And I think Sam Zell sums it up nicely when he says, I want everyone's opinion, but I determine my own path. Now, the third investment, a really life principle that Sam Zell tries to live by is, I'm probably going to get the pronunciation wrong here, but it's Shem Tov, which is a Hebrew phrase for a good name. Sam Zell believes that reputation is your most important asset, and you need to make sure that you preserve it. It doesn't matter what you're doing, because if you have a bad reputation, it's going to carry with you, and you're not going to be able to do what you want to do, most likely. As he sums it up, everything you do, everything you say is part of your permanent record. Your name reflects your character. And Sam Zell has always strived to be a man of his word, and he's very blunt because of that, since he wants to make sure there's no misunderstandings and that he's very clear about what he's trying to do. Which really leads to the fourth and final principle that I'm going to cover here today, and that's to have fun with what you're doing. Investing can be very stressful, and especially if you're diving into all this due diligence, it can be easy to second-guess yourself all the time, and it can be very, very draining on someone when you're trying to do all the things that you think are required for investing. And often those things are hard, there's no way to get around that, but Sam Zell has always made a point to try and keep a sort of loose environment, a sort of camaraderie among his people so that they can keep staying productive and they're not going to get totally burnt out. And as Sam Zell puts it, he says that money is only a way of keeping score. And he says that I've always been much more drawn to the experience. Because the way that Sam Zell runs his business, he is trying to solve problems and puzzles, and that can be pretty exhausting if you're not going into it with the right sort of mindset. He says you can't let ego get ahead of you since you can't let your brand be bigger than your performance, and performance is what matters. And typically when someone is uptight or stressful or is overanalyzing things to death, that's when big mistakes are made. Which is why Sam Zell says he coined an 11th commandment, and that is, thou shalt not take thyself too seriously. So when you're investing, remember, it's not the end all be all, there are other things to life, and you got to make sure you're enjoying the process, because the money itself is kind of meaningless if you didn't enjoy doing it, and you don't have anything to enjoy after getting it. So those are four investment and life principles that Sam Zell articulates in his autobiography, Am I Being Too Subtle? Again, I definitely recommend that one for anyone who's interested in learning more about Sam Zell, or really just getting a very interesting perspective on business and investing, especially if you're interested in real estate at all. Again, that link is in the description below if you want to check it out. Now, this was not an exhaustive list of all of the principles that Sam Zell lives by, but it's for the major ones that you could definitely pick up in his book and in all of his interviews that he's done throughout the years, since he's very active on TV and in a lot of media appearances. Anyways, that's all I've got for today. If you like this video, please like it since it helps the channel out a lot. And if you like this sort of content about great investors, real estate, investing, and pretty much everything as it has to do with personal finance, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new updates since I put out new videos every single week.
Check out my book, The One Property Retirement, about a simple strategy for building your retirement nest egg using real estate. It's great for beginners who might be unfamiliar with the real estate buying process since it takes you from the very beginning of the deal, from vetting the deal, running the numbers, all that great stuff, through the closing table and beyond with maintaining and renting out the property. If you end up reading the book, definitely leave a review on Amazon since that would help me out a lot. But until next time, take care.